Let's make a math quiz program with multiplication problems. We'll use randint to make the numbers randomly. And let's make the first one. And we'll say that the first number is between 2 and 9. And the second number is between 11 and 99. So these are problems that maybe people could do in their head. Then we'll compute the product. And then we'll ask, we'll prompt for, uh, we'll present the question and then get the answer. Answer equals input. Then we'll use an F string and we'll say, uh, what is num1 times num2? Question mark space. Okay, and then we'll have something like um, if the answer matches the actual product, then print great, something like that. Um, let's see what this looks like. What is 4 times 80, 160, 320? And what did it say? Ah, okay. So what's going on wrong is that input returns a string and product is a number, so they don't match. We have to turn the string containing an integer into an integer. Now, just so I don't keep getting really hard math problems, I'm just going to do two of the same. So let's run again. 3 times 8 is 24. It says, great. Okay, good. All right, next, let's put this in a loop and make it stop if you enter an empty string. So I think we want to do something like this. We'll call this a response for the moment. And then we'll say, um, if not response, then break. And that'll get out of this loop. Okay, so we're going to produce the numbers, find the product, and get the response, which is a, a string. And if it's an empty string, we're going to break. That gets out of the loop. Um, otherwise, we go on and we turn it into an integer. And um, now let's do if you don't get it right. So let's just say we'll print great if the answer equals the product. Uh, so we'll just pull this. If the answer is the product, else we'll say wrong. OK, let's run this. 4 times 9 is 10. Wrong. 4 times 3, 12. Great. To get out of the loop, an empty string. And the program finishes. OK, a couple more things. If the response does not contain a number, this program will fail. I'll show you. I type x, and then it fails with a value error. So we need to handle a value error uh, with something like this. We will do try this, and then if there's an exception that's a value error, then we'll print a little message. And then it'll just carry on. It won't, it won't fail. I'll demonstrate. OK, 9 times 7, 63. Good. 5 times 8 is x. That was not a number. And then it doesn't present the same problem, which maybe it should. It goes on to the next problem, 45. Hit return, program stops. Great. OK, one more feature we might want to add is have the program time you and tell you how long, uh, how quick you were. So for that, we're going to need the time function inside the time module. And before we present the question, we'll make a note of what time it is. When, yeah, here. So then after we get the response, we will 
say elapsed time is the time now minus the start time. Okay, so that's the elapsed time. And then we can say here, correct in elapsed seconds. And we'll make this an F string. Okay, what's wrong with this? Elapsed time. Okay, let's see if that works. Eight times five. Forty. Correct in seven and a ridiculous number of decimal places afterwards. So let's throw in this. We only want point two. We only want two decimal places. Let's restart. Okay, 28, correct in 4.92 seconds. Good, 7 times 7, 49, I'll try to do one fast. 45, 18, 27, um, then I'll make it stop. All right, do we have everything that we wanted? All right, let's just review this here. We're using the time function in the time module and the randint function in the random module. We got a loop, we find the two numbers that are multiplied together. We compute the product. We make a note of what time we're producing the prompt. We make the prompt by using an F string and putting together the pieces. And we get the response, and then we calculate the time it took to get the response. And if the response was an empty string, then we break. Um, so I'm thinking maybe if there wasn't a response, we don't need to calculate the elapsed time. And then inside a try accept block, we will turn the response into um, an integer form of the response. And I think I'll rename this, call this int, int response. Uh, and then we have this kind of if here, if the response is uh, equal to the actual product, then we print correct in whatever the time is, otherwise we print wrong. And if there's an error with um, the input not containing an integer, then we produce this message. Okay, that is a little Python program to make a math quiz with multiplication. So long.